but let's start from the very beginning hope you guys are doing well well hydrated rest of the night malarkey as you can tell watching via the video i am sweating like an absolute pig it is absolutely baking here in london absolutely baking i don't know what the temperatures are at the moment actually let me double check and see what the temperatures are in good old london um because it is mad it is mad it is currently how many degrees right now it's currently 33 degrees holy shit it's 33 degrees right now according to bbc weather no wonder i'm absolutely melting supposedly on thursday it's gonna be 37 degrees oh my god um and i plan to run outside in the morning when it's that hot because you know i'm a bad boy like that but yeah it's been baking it's been hot it's been amazing weather i'm not gonna complain i think you know londoners that complain about the weather should just get shot in the face instantly because we usually you know most summers are a flip of a coin um what the weather's gonna be we have no idea we can't predict anything anything we can really predict kind of a little bit sorta is carnival carnival is the only time when suddenly the weather in london becomes barely manageable right it becomes okay usually outside of carnival it's fucking a flip of a coin you get these weird days in the week where it's really warm but then you're stuck at work and you're hating your life and you can't go to a park because you're at work and stuff and when the weekend comes along it's really horrible weather or no one to go outside because they're tired so usually so when we have a week like this right where it's gonna be just back to back to back sun right i'm looking here on the weather report it says we're gonna have what it's gonna be 20 uh 33 degrees today uh 32 on wednesday 37 on thursday 27 on friday and it's gonna rain on saturday and it's gonna be sunny again on sunday that's like the perfect perfect weekend because what it means that on a friday you're gonna have clouds so if you're gonna go out on a friday night it'll be a bit cloudy a bit overcast you'll be able to go out hang out do your thing wear a t-shirt wear, wear a t-shirt a t-shirt still and then on the, on, on a saturday it'll rain or call it can't cause you to calm down relax recover from your hangover and on sunday you can go out again columbia road flyer market go to take modern go whatever you know do your thing whatever you may be done but honestly that is an amazing weather report i am so so happy but yeah it's been melting and i knew it was really warm because I've, again i'm not the biggest i'm not sure um, i don't know weather's weather weather checking is a bit like horoscopes right there's there's there, you have to be a particular kind of person that does that right i don't really check the weather on my phone at all zero um, and I've only, and you know, most iPhones have weather app, most smartphones have weather app. So it's not that, you know, there's no excuse there really, but I don't really tend to check it. I just tend to kind of go by the seat of my pants. But I realized the other day, cause I, I was running back from work. Um, well, you know, formerly the place called work. <laughs> That's a story I'll save for later. But, um, I was running back from work and I work around the Shoreditch area. So usually I like to run back home on a Monday. I don't know why it like, gives me a little bit of a kick up the ass. Monday's usually a bit of a dead day. Everyone moans about Monday. You know, there's that, you know, hashtag Monday motivation tweet on, I um, mean, hashtag on Twitter that people use in order to kind of psych themselves up for the working week because they hate what they're doing. But you know, I love Mondays. Like I said to you before previously, I don't care about days. Days to me are irrelevant. Each day is a blessing. Each day is a gift. And um, we only have one opportunity to live on this great planet that we know called earth we are not aware of our um reality we don't know if we're living in an alternate reality according to elon musk we're not sure if impending doom is going to strike us at every turn so why not enjoy it and look forward to all the days so because of that i like to kickstart my day by you know um or you know end it well by going on a big four and a half mile run basically from shoreditch all the way to stratford which is you know a pretty good distance and uh, most of it's straight m not many windy roads whatever it's a bit busy because you know tend to, it's rush hour and stuff like that but i realized the money just gone um i wore i bought this new training top from sports direct a little gray sort of caramel top um a little um under armor sort of like a um, muscle shirt sort of thing and a pair of socks and some socks whatever whatever anyway so i was wearing my whole garb right i had a long sleeve shirt on some shorts i had some compression um sock five thingies some ankle socks whatever i was going to do my thing and i realized i was absolutely baking and he's wheezing right obviously i've got the old asthma going on now and i was uh, i'm not sure i updated you guys but since i've last checked in i got um diagnosed with sports related asthma so now i have to carry this little inhaler around with me i have to use it basically um four times a day two puffs and then um i think next week or the fifth is it the fifth i think it's the fifth what what day is that gonna be uh no the week after next i'm due to go into um to get uh to get a checkup at the at my local hospital to make sure my respiratory systems are you know running okay but i knew that was the case you know a few months ago I remember running outside um, in the morning before work and I remember kind of, you know, nearly kind of collapsing because my chest was caving into itself um, and I was wheezing, I was, I was feeling really out of breath and at first I thought I was having a heart attack, you know, due to other external 
uh, factors, <laughs> extracurricular, extracurricular activities. But luckily, I wasn't having a heart attack. Um, it was bursely respiratory. I was wheezing a lot. I could hear my, my chest go. <laughs> and anyone that's listened to the podcast previously will know that, you know, I've had some nasal issues back in the day. But now I think I sound a lot better than I did before. I used to sound very nasally. Now I hope I sound a lot better than I did before. But if I don't, you know, what can you do? Get a filter, change my voice. But I can't, you know, I just got to live with what I have. Um, so, yeah, um, I, I, I assumed that something was wrong with me. But then finally, finally, after much prodding and poking, I finally went to the GP. And, yeah, I was told that, you know, I have sports related asthma. I was told to breathe into some like little, you know, the kitchen ro- loo rolls, right? They've got this little instrument. It's sort of like an arrow. It's got like a little gauge and you're meant to blow into it. And then that kind of shows you how much kind of, you know, respiratory functions you have in your whatever respiratory system. And the guy that was doing it, the GP, the, he was basically the male nurse. He had it and he, and he blew into it. He's like, oh, look, it's super easy. Go, he blew into it and the arrow went bang right to the end, right? He gave it to me and I went, <laughs> and it kind of went like a quarter of the way up. And he was like, oh, hold on. Let's do that again because I'm sure you got, you got you can do much better than that. And I did it again. <laughs> and it went just, a, just, just below halfway. It was like pathetic. So obviously you could tell that, you know, my breathing isn't where it should be at the moment. But um, the acid, so far the... Um, Little inhaler is working really well for me. I'm lucky I didn't really... Back in the day, I didn't really give a... I didn't really cuss people in school. Remember in school, there was that thing where you couldn't, you know, carry this, having braces, um, having shit shoes was, a, you know, a nightmare for you. But luckily, I didn't take the piss out of anyone in school that had an inhaler. So no kind of karma is coming my way. And, you know, I don't know. These things are a little bit cooler when you're older, isn't it? Like getting braces so you can fix your teeth. Normally, people are, you know, are a bit more forgiving about it. I'm a bit more forgiving nowadays. I'm not sure if, you know, as a 30-year-old... Um, if I've got braces, if people look at me weird, I'm not sure. But I think by and large, people kind of get it, right? Um, there's always the option of getting Invisalign or, you know, getting your whole, getting a whole Rich the Kids sort of treatment and getting some massive, you know, Roberto Firmino chompers. But if you wanted to do it that way, I think no one will care. So I think, you know, um, braces and inhalers are sort of in the same sort of realm. So anyway, I've been running a lot. Um, I realized it was really hot because I nearly died again the other day running back on Monday. Um, and yeah, it's been amazing though. I really love running that that warm. I can't wait until I lose a few more pounds. I can run up topless and shit and look amazing. I've seen a few people run topless around London. It's not the same as the, the, the LA stuff, is it, right? Um, LA, especially um, the CrossFit community, they love to run outside, um, you know, semi-naked, you know, topless and enjoying themselves. I think London, you tend to get a bit of a weird look um, when you run like that, mostly because of chabs, right? Um, I know from my area in Canning Town, that was like the standard uniform of like, you know, the sort of like Slazinger, Lonsdale, Reebok wearing, shitty Tottenham, hosp- shitty Tottenham West Ham tattoo people and some late, late Norian tat guys. You know, you know, the kind of guys that are like, you know, on the edge of joining the BNP, right? But they're not, they're not really that brave enough, right? Um, the kind of ones that have like mixed race daughters, but they hate black people. Um, those are the ones that always used to walk around my area like topless. That was it. That was the main topless brigade, right? Um, Dan, Andy, John, you know, those kind of, you know, absolute psychos. The ones that, you know, the kind of guy, the kind of like middle-aged men who would legitimately fight a 17-year-old, right? Because they just, you know, they don't give a shit. There's no like, there is no like adult and child for them. You know, anyone could get it at any time, you know? You what, mate? You what? You what? Remember that, that kind of like peacocky thing? It's really funny. So, yeah. Um, my videos of topless men isn't the best but I think nowadays you know like I said I was running along um, Milan High Street I was also running along Bow and I saw loads of guys that like, running down the street topless and stuff running and you know expressing it, expressing their true masculinity and I, I can't wait until I lose some pounds I can do it too talking about losing pounds I'm down to 223 now man lost 10 pounds 10 fucking pounds 223 I feel fucking awesome I can't wait until to get just below 220 220 is when I you start to see some discernible differences in what I look like. I start to feel my trousers are a bit bigger. I start to feel like my jacket's feeling a bit looser. My t-shirts hang a bit better. My chest looks a bit better. My, my shoulders are obviously looking good because I, you know, I pump weights and shit. I lift that big rock over my head like... Rrr, 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 right? But um, under 220 is when I start to see some real differences. And then as soon as the 220 comes, it's just a cascading hill. Do you know what I mean? The weight just keeps falling off. So I can't wait to get, uh, to get under 220, get in the 219s, 28... 218, 217s, and then from T now and basically the end of September, the goal is to get to about 210. Um, if I get to 200, I'll be fucking amazing. And then from there, kind of, you know, um, do, do another race and see where I've marked myself. Because I think that might be a good thing to do. I think I might do a race now 
or the end of the month, maybe next week, right? I do a little Sunday run and see where I measure at because, you know, running is quite, it's predicated on, you know, running a lot. Obviously, your cardiovascular capabilities um, come into question, but also it's very, it's predicated a lot on what you weigh, right? The lighter you are, the quicker that you run, um, you know, the stronger that you, you know, you know, the easier it is for your body to hold your weight as you're running along the street, right? Because running can take quite a lot out of you, um, you know, stomping your joints on the ground, boom, boom, boom. Even if you're running with the right technique, it can take a lot out of you. So having, um, tra- stripping away that all the non-essential um, weight is a better to go about it. So it'd be a good way for me to maybe to judge where I am fitness wise by running a race now when I'm like, you know, in the low 220s, right? Or maybe when I get 220 exactly and then running a race again when I get to that 210 and then running it again when I get to two, um, 200 and then again when I get to 190 and again 185, 180. Um, I mentioned speaking to a friend the other day that I know when I when I was, I was um, I think there's a picture here somewhere. There's a picture over there. I'll show you. Let me get it actually. Get up. So um, if you're watching via, the, if you're listening via, if you're listening via the YouTube, then I'll just describe it to you. But I've got this picture when I used to work in Dr. Martin's, right? This is a picture that I took um, in a little photo booth they had there, which is, you know, the, the pièce de résistance of the Dr. Martin's retail store. Um, you know, great little photo booth there. People used to come in and get their pictures done all for free. Um, but I remember this was my peak weight loss. This is when I was about 185, 187, right? And I think personally i looked amazing but a lot of my friends a lot of people that i was with used to say i looked too gaunt right i, I didn't look good I, I i lost too much weight now again i think a lot of that had to do with the fact that you know some people love to hate right because i think um have you ever tried to um go on a diet and then suddenly you told your friends you're on a diet and, every, and all of a sudden everyone turned into a fucking nutritionist right people love to kind of you know stick their oar in and get involved and comment because you know again maybe it's human nature because it's far easier to point and to criticize or to comment on other people's lives than it is to kind of analyze your own. Um, it can be a bit brutal and it can kind of, you know, bring about some questions that you're not ready to answer just yet. But I have to say, I think I looked quite good and I quite like this, right? But I'm also aware that being 180 is a real commitment. Like I'm going to have to like, there's a lot of lifestyle choices I have to kind of fix and get into place in order to kind of not balloon back up against the way I am now. Um, and I think that's the hardest thing that I'm kind of reconciling with in my head. Is that when I achieve this weight, I don't want to get above two. Like, for instance, if I get to 180, I don't want to go above 200 again, right? I want to be that weight. But if I get to 200, I don't want to be above 210 again, right? I want to stay at that 200 weight. But I think, ideally, my max weight should be about 190, 195. I should be. That's where I should be. I think I'll look the best in there. I think that's where clothes fit me the best. I have the good posture. You know, everything looks how it should do. And if you're wondering, why are you mentioning clothes? Because that's what I care about, right? I don't want to be too big. I don't want to be too small. I want to be exactly where I am so I can fit into Com. I can fit into Supreme. I can fit into Babe. All right? I can fit into the stuff that I like to wear and just keep it moving. I know it's vain, but that, that's my motivation. So, yeah, I'm thinking, yeah, so th- I guess the goal would be that I remember, I think I saw a video with this guy, um, Matt De La Via, um, the dude that does all the minimalism stuff. It's really cool. Check it out. You mentioned something along the lines of like a good habit in terms of keeping up your work, working out. It's to never take more than two days off of any habit you're trying to build. So no, don't take more than, don't take more than, don't take two days in a row off at any time, right? So if you're learning a language, if you're trying to keep up a journal, if you're going to learn an instrument, if you're trying to lose some weight, try not to do, try not to take off two days back to back because the idea is that, you know, those two days back to back is another habit, right? So you're giving yourself an excuse. So kind of getting back on the wagon regardless, uh, you know, you like to have one day off, but you have to get back on it the next day. And it kind of got cascades from that. And then I think that kind of probably leads itself to the whole um, Jerry Seinfeld um, keep the chain thing, right? Remember, I think he gave advice to like a young um, comedian or someone that wanted to write jokes. Like, oh, how do you keep writing jokes? He's like, oh, just keep writing every day and don't break the chain, right? Once you get one day down, you want to do the want to do it again the other day, like the lowest hanging fruit. Um, what do you call it? Um, the path of least resistance. Tim Ferriss is that, right? Where you have to kind of just just try and aim for five minutes of whatever you're doing each day, and then kind of build up from there, as opposed to saying, oh, I'm gonna stop doing all of these things tomorrow, and it's like you you you. You're giving yourself such a high mountain to climb that inevitably if you fail short, you just, you know, forgive up and never try again. Um, so, yeah, I guess that's the key for me. So, let's see. That's that's the goal. Get to about 190 overall. I could probably do that by the end of the year if I keep doing what I'm doing now. I'm eating quite healthy. I'm still doing my zero. Um, I'm 16 hour fast, mostly four days to five days a week, which has been a pretty good godsend for me. I'm eating the same things every day. That's kind of been easy for me too. Eggs, um, some sausages. 
um, maybe some tuna, maybe some salad, and then for lunch, salad, chicken, salad, tuna, salad, fish, salad, steak, the same sort of kind of routine again, 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 loads of fruit, and then fast, and I'm done, right, so I'm kind of, I've got a, a good little kind of structure of what I'm doing, I just need to kind of keep it up, be consistent, and hopefully, as we go, the weight will fall, I'll feel good, I'll run faster, and I'll go, but I think that's a good trick, I think I'm going to definitely try and do the whole, um, do a race now whilst I'm 220. Do a race again when I'm 210. Another race again on 200, 290, blah, 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 so on and so forth. I think that'd be a good way to kind of get a gauge of where I'm at, man. Where I'm at, where I'm at. Anyway, um, what else has been happening to me? Oh, I 